Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to Cub Chat Live. We're joined by our namesake, Cub Chat Mike. We've got a good topic today, right, Mike? Gina, nice to see you. And yes, we have a wonderful topic. How can PACs and troops benefit from relationship with each other? Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this. I really only, you know, like I'm thinking, okay, sometimes I know a scout will come talk to a Cub Scout pack and you know like that's about the extent that i know happens here um I'm, I'm really excited to talk about like what can be a very symbiotic relationship for both the troop and the pack um i know that you are excited to welcome viewer comments as well today right yes very much so if you are watching this whether you are on the boy scouts channel the scouting magazine channel um or the uh scout life channel be sure to just comment on the video you're watching to join the live chat if you're watching on a council page, hello, welcome, thank you for watching. You can also have a conversation in the comments. What we can see are those few channels live and we'll be throwing up some of those comments live as well. But wherever you're watching, sit back, relax. We've got a great show in store today. Hello to Frisco, Texas and Rob. Hello to Iran, Omid is in the house. Hello, Wendy, hello, Pac-38, Troop 38. And uh, Rob says this was part of our Scouts BSA roundtable discussion last night. Okay, Rob, hit us with all the good comments. We want to read them. Hello to Pennsylvania. Hello to Troop 601. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Come Chat Mike. <laughs> well, thanks, Gina, very much. And you will recall from some of our earlier Cup Chat sessions, I love to tell a corny joke. Uh, and I'm going to give everyone the question now. And at the very end, of the presentation, I'm gonna tell you the punchline. But here's the question. How many Cub Scouts does it take to change a light bulb? Be thinking about that. And if you actually think you know the answer, go ahead and email it in on the comments. But today we wanna to talk about Cub Scout packs and troops and can they benefit from a close relationship with each other? And that's really the question. Can PACs and troops benefit from a close relationship? Because think about it, PACs go from kindergarten to fifth grade, troops go from sixth grade to age 18. My goodness, the physical development between a kindergartner and an, and an 18 year old, the, uh, the psychological, the intellectual development is just incredible. And so, the question is, can these units benefit from a close relationship? And my premise on this Cub, Scout, Cub Chat Live session is yes, they can benefit from a clo close relationship. And today I'm gonna cover this topic in four points. Point number one, identify the packs and troops in your area so you know who's playing in your sandbox, who you know who your neighbors are. Number two, develop a plan to bring the units together. Um, number three, share some activities during the year, something that you units can do together. And four, acknowledge the psychological and developmental benefits that older scouts can have working with younger scouts. So those are the four points we're gonna cover. And I am positive that viewers watching this session will have had significant experience and will have some wonderful stories to share about PACs and troops working together. So I encourage everyone who's watching and who has one of those stories, please just go ahead and get it to us now so perhaps we can share those before the session ends. Yes, I'll interject and say I know Wendy, um, we were giving a shout out to Pack 38 and Troop 38. Do the Pack and Troop interact? And if so, in which way? Let us know in the comments. Now, some Packs and Troops have the same charter partner. Perhaps they even meet at the same location. And sometimes Packs and Troops that have the same charter partner and work in the, and meet in the same location meet at the very same time. That, in my experience, is pretty rare and pretty unusual. If you've got that, you are very lucky. But in my experience, often the only time that the pack thinks about a troop is they get ready for crossover at the end of the year 
when those second year Weeblos are going to transition. And I think the same time with troops. The only time they think about Cub Scout packs is, well, it's getting to the end of the year. We hope to bring some new uh, second year Weeblos into the pack or to the troop. So now they think about it for the first time. Well, let's develop a plan to bring those units together. And the first thing I would suggest is that you determine how many units are near you in your district. How many packs are in your district? How many troops are in your district? You may know some of them, but I would be surprised if you knew all of them. Now, if you've got a particularly large district, it may not make sense to identify all the units in the district, but you want to look at those packs or troops that are within, say, a five to eight mile radius. Who are who are who is around you? So just now, to follow up with a question, you're saying that a pack could have a relationship with not just one troop? Yes, absolutely. And I, I am gonna suggest that if a pack can identify uh one, two, three troops that were in a relatively close geographical area, you want to develop a relationship with all of them. So you're dispelling a myth that Rob is saying is out there. He's saying um, they have 22 packs and 19 troops in their district. One of their pack leaders thought they could only work with the troop under the same charter partner. Not true. Um, And he says, this isn't the first time we've heard from a unit that that thought that way. So you are dispelling that myth for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want each Cub Pack to know all of the the troops that are within a relatively close range of, of, of where they meet. You see, in the old days, what I would say is pre covid you would know uh, a lot of your uh, units in neighboring, or you would know a lot of the volunteers and neighboring units because you would see them at the round table meeting. You would get to know them. You'd have the breakout sessions and you would have this face-to-face discussions. Well, with COVID and, and, and then going online, it's really not the same. And, and in my experience, Sometimes these virtual roundtables aren't even as well attended as as, uh, they were when you could meet face to face. But the first thing to do is you want to know the units that are in your area. Rusty echoes what you're saying. It's all about options. I think that's important to think about when your Cub Scouts are potentially going to be, you may not want to think of it this way, but shopping for a troop, finding the right one for them, maybe finding one that has space for them. So, uh, yeah, great point. That's exactly right. So now what you want to do, if you've identified the units that in your neighborhood, you really want to get out and and develop some contact with them. Find a way, determine a way to meet your neighbors. Uh, Your district executive can probably provide email addresses, uh, send an email out to, and I'm saying not only the troops in your neighborhood, but the local Cub Scout uh, packs, send uh, them a note also. Let's all meet. We have a round table coming up. Maybe there's gonna be one in person. Let's all plan on staying a little bit later or meeting a little bit late earlier and get to know each other. Or it wouldn't be such a bad idea for a some of the leadership, one or more of the leadership of a Cub Scout uh, pack to actually attend a troop meeting, see for themselves how the meeting is organized. What are the quality of the leaders? Get to know uh, one or more troops in your areas. So we have a few pe- people commenting in with how their troop and pack interact. Um, Andrea has a great two-part comment. She says their pack has frequent interaction with two troops in their local area, especially with crossovers and getting the AOLs to visit. Many troops in their district do Weeblos weekends, and they're really fun. And then here, kind of like what you're talking about, it's it's not just around crossover season. She says right now they're doing a major fall event that tons that uh, tons are involved in in the district. The troops are leading stations and getting to know the district cubs also while working on advancements. The Weeblos and AOLs are able to stay overnight. 
the first night with the troops getting to know them. I like that because you kind of see the progression of, you know, there's day events for the Cub Scouts. The Weeblos are getting to do their overnight and potentially overnight, uh, interact with the troop. And then the troop is probably taking part in it in a, in a more involved way. There's some aspirational goals there. That, that was a wonderful comment. And that was an, a wonderful example of how troops and PACs can uh, work together. My point at this time is that the object that we, what we want to accomplish is we want to develop a personal relationship between the various leaders. You want to know who they are and have, have a relationship with them, if nothing else, just to be able to send them an email. Now, pack to pack is pretty good because if you know your other packs in the neighborhood, you share program ideas, you can share recruiting ideas, you can, you can mentor each other, help. What do I do with this recharter issue? The packs need to stick together. You can share gear. <laughs> share gear, best practices, share experiences. But that's the same thing, of course, for the troops. How many are, troops are there within, say, a five to eight mile radius? Get to know the leadership. You're going to need to know the leadership as you get close to a crossover situation anyway. And remember, Weblos 2, the second year Weblos program, is designed to, to gently transition those second year Weblos into a scouting program. And so the more you know about the scouting programs in your area, the better. Now, I want to follow up on something that you said a second ago, uh, Gina, and that is what about the Cub Pack that has a relationship right now with only one Boy Scout troop? And, and they're thinking, well, maybe I have to keep that relationship only. Answer, no. It's okay to focus on that unit. And many Cub Packs, I think, have a natural pipeline to a Boy Scout troop. But don't ignore the other troops. Troops um, uh, have different activities, different programs. Uh, so don't just focus on the one troop that you've always focused on that you've always had a pipeline with. That's a great point too, because your Cub Scouts might think, you know, they get to Weeblos too, and they're thinking, you know, scouting's not for me. I don't want to do all of these, you know, like I, maybe I'm not as into the, I don't know, some component of the program. They want to go to a troop that's focused on outdoor adventures and camping and what have you. And, and different troops can go different directions for sure. Andrea says constant contacts, very important. They know more troops than packs, kind of like you're saying. Uh-huh. Well, and here's something that I thought might be interesting, and that is see if your pack can share a unit commissioner with a troop. Often packs discover that they don't have uh, the luck attracting uh, unit commissioners as troops do. Uh, commissioners often enjoy the troop experience, and they're not so sure about the younger ones. Uh, but if you have a, a, a troop that you're working with and they have a good unit commissioner, see if that unit commissioner will then be willing to work uh, with, your, with your pack. If you have the same unit commissioner, that individual can be a shuttle diplomat. They're going to know what the troop is doing. They're going to know what the pack is doing. They can take information from one to the other, and they can be a very important uh, instrument in bringing the two units together. Now, the next thing you can do, which I think is a, a great idea, is to share unit calendars. At the beginning of the year, every Boy Scout troop, every BSA troop, every uh, uh, Cub Scout pack has a calendar. And you might want to look and see what activities could be the same. So, for example, here is the Cub Scout Pack 275 recruiting brochure that has the pack calendar on the back. Let me look here for a second and see if I can see any activities that might work together. Well, let's see. Pinewood Derby? I don't think so. Rocket. Wait a minute. Here's the Veterans Day Parade. That would be a perfect opportunity. The local Veterans Day Parade. The Cub Scout packs can, of the district can be together. Uh, you get the uh, troops in the district together and join in the Veterans Day Parade. What else is on the calendar? Here's a community service event. Wow, wouldn't it be nice if the local 
scout troop or troops knew of a community service event that you're going to be involved in. Maybe the troop or maybe a couple of the patrols would be interested in being involved in that. But the bottom line is look for at least one significant event per year. It's my suggestion. One significant event per year where you could combine the units. Wendy, I've been saving a comment from Wendy that really fits this point. Um, their pack and troop work together all the time. They do service projects such as a neighborhood food drive. The troop runs a refreshment stand during pack pine, pack pine wood derby races. They help the pack by taking that task from pack parents. What a great way to delegate and take the you know some of the load off of your leaders. Um, the troop has Weeblos camp out with them and work on some requirements with them. So when you're looking at the, you're comparing maybe the Scouts BSA calendar with the Cub Scouts calendar, not every one of these has to be helping the Scouts BSA members with advancement, say, right? They can, it, it, maybe there is room at Pinewood Derby. Well, that's right. At, at least you could make the calendar available to the, uh, the Boy Scout troop and say, look at this calendar and see if there's anything that you would find interesting. In previous Cub Chat uh, live sessions, I've talked about this PAC 275 and the fact that each year they bring Liberty Wildlife to the PAC meeting and they bring an injured owl, they have an eagle they bring, a falcon, um, a hawk, these birds can't be released into the wild for one reason, even after they have, um, they've been, uh, they've healed from whatever injury they, uh, they had. But if the Boy Scout troop, the, the BSA troop knew that that event was happening, you've got, you've got a number of different merit badges where being observant of these injured animal or these injured birds and learning more about them could fit in. And so a group of, uh, of Scouts BSA might visit a particular program of the Cub Scout pack because of the interest that it would be to both parties. Yeah, uh, and you make me think too, you know, the we the older Weeblos Scouts are not far off from your younger troop, uh, you know, like some of the younger Scouts BSA members age, you know, we think of them as like, they're on the other end of the spectrum. There's little kids and then there's the older kids, but there's that whole middle range and they're in the same age group. That's right. And I'm going to come back to that in just a second. But in terms of looking for that one significant event or significant events where you can join the, the, the two units, there is a great, I Googled uh, this topic and I saw a video of a joint recruiting event between a Cub Scout pack and a, and a Scouts BSA unit. Now, they were probably chartered by the same organization, wouldn't have to be, uh, but there was a beautiful video on how the room was set up, the Cub Scouts on this side and some activities and the Scouts BSA on this side. That is a natural, it would seem to me. Uh, we've discovered uh, in our neck of the woods that geocaching is very, very popular. And that is a natural, activity on a weekend for a patrol or a troop and certainly for different dens and for the Cub Scout pack. Uh, how about Scout Sunday? Scout Sunday, you, uh, many chartered partners uh, are religious organizations. A, a joint Scout Sunday event with uh, Cub Scout packs and Scouts BSA would be a natural or a conservation project, a weekend hike, scheduling campouts, or maybe there's a district campout or event. Uh, if you know who the other leaders are, those are opportunities to get to know them and to establish other events that the, the different units can do uh, during the year. Just to call out Scout Sunday and the Scout Sabbath, um, that's a great time to have a bunch of youth in different colored uniforms because you're going to have a lot of folks looking at scouts and they don't maybe don't know ranks. They don't know Cub Scouts versus Scouts BSA. They don't know venturing. So having like a diverse array of scouts there is a great thing. You know, your venturing crew, or if you have Sea Scouts, get all the scouts there you can in different uniforms. It's it's important for recruitment and bonding. And it makes, I think, those youth feel like they're united in scouting. And I will bet, Gina, that there are many, many examples, way more than we've just talked about here, uh, that our viewers have had 
uh, experiences with. And so I would encourage them to send you these emails and list these additional events that they've ha had experience with that have worked well. We can put those in the comments and then later people can, uh, can look and get some ideas of things that have worked well for other units. But before we leave that topic, anytime you have an Eagle Court of Honor where you are now presenting a Scouts BSA with the Eagle rank and the pageantry and, and the work that goes into those, that would be a beautiful event to invite your Cub Scouts, maybe not the entire pack, but certainly the older uh, uh, Weeblos 1, Weeblos 2, maybe the Bears. The point is, this shows these younger scouts the benefit for sticking with the program and, 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 the, and the great um, enjoyment that they can have from, from watching this particular ceremony. Yeah, I work with a venturing crew, and anytime there's going to be a flag ceremony, we're asking the Cub Scouts if they want to come and do that for us, and it, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, also, Andrea, I think she's getting on. Andrea and Wendy are getting all star commenters of the day. Andrea says their local girls troop always invites them to their Scout Sunday. It's a great way to get involved with the girls troop too. So just like you said, Scout Sunday in action. Wendy says, also kind of along with one of your points, she said to keep our budget costs low, they share campsite fees and equipment by having pack and troop campouts with group activities during the event. We talked about pack sharing, you know, potentially gear, but you could be sharing some of that with a troop too. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the troop is often going to have way more camping equipment than the, uh, than the pack. So having a good relationship there may allow that pack with not so much stuff to be able to come over here and convince the troop to loan them something from time to time. Now, Gina, I am not a child psychologist, but I'm a dad, I'm a granddad, I've been involved in scouting for pretty much my whole life, and I must tell you that I have seen very positive results when older scouts are just nice to younger scouts and, are, and, and work with younger scouts and talk to younger scouts. There is a benefit in that younger scouts development that I think is, is, is so important. We all know that as parents, we can explain things or give our children advice and they may listen and they may not. But if that same message comes to them from, a, from an older scout, or from a different person, it often has much more impact. Um, in our pack, I'm going to tell a story. We had an older uh, Cub Scout. His name was Brandon. He had flaming red hair. We called him red-haired Brandon. He was kind of a big kid, but he was nice to the, uh, the Cubs, a uh, younger Cub transition to Boy Scouts. When our second-year Weeblos visited that troop, on the visitation, and there was red-haired Brandon, and they flocked to him, and he flocked to them. If there was any of those Weeblos who were on the fence as to whether they were going to join the Scouting BSA or not, they were in. And so that the benefit of the older Scouts bringing the younger ones along really can't be underestimated. I mean, does it help or not to know you have a friend there? You know, you're going to make this jump. It might feel like you're joining like a totally different club or organization. That's to you, right. But you have and a you, friend there. That's exactly right. Our now, audience is tracking with you, Cub Chat Mike, just so you know. Todd says they're doing wood carving with Cubs on October 25th. I assume he's talking about his troop. And Rob says for troops looking to recruit from the area packs, they suggest hosting a den meeting, especially one that's specifically working on an adventure that is a preview of Scouts BSA, like the ones dealing with camping, cooking, or first aid. Those are both great chances for, for Scouts BSA members to show up at a den meeting, show up at maybe a pack meeting, and lead an activity, introduce themselves, kind of like Red Hair Brandon. Those, those are wonderful comments. And I'm sitting here thinking of what I'm... Uh, uh, of the rest of my presentation. Why didn't I think of that point from, from the, the ones that you're raising? They're, they're really, really good. I wanted to point out one thing, however, and that I want to ask a question. How many of our viewers out there have used den chiefs or have had an experience with a den chief? That is where a scout, often from the pack, will come back and work with a den 
or be involved in the pack in some way. I don't know that den chiefs are as common these days as they were when I was a Cub Scout master, but we had at least one or two den chiefs in, uh, in, in the past that I thought were very valuable. That older, that scout, BSA, that older young uh, uh, person is now working with the little ones and they look up to, uh, a young scout, a young person looks up to those older scouts. They are looking for, for role models. They're looking for people to, to, that they can emulate and, and, and pattern their behavior after. So uh, the, the, the den chief idea, it seems to me, is some, I'd love to hear about successes uh, with den chiefs. Rusty says they're currently looking for a den chief. I've actually heard that a lot where, where um, dens are saying, we want one. We just don't know where to find one. Maybe that's where the, you know, look at more than one troop kind of answer comes yes. from. Andrea has yeah. kind of a question. Uh, she's saying many of the, the older scouts feel awkward interacting with younger cubs. Many seem that they can't get over it and, and kind of shy away. I know my instinct with that, Andrea, is to kind of almost be prescriptive and we're going to go to a den meeting. You're going to talk about X topic. And maybe that kind of breaks the ice. They don't feel like they have to come up with something or they're just supposed to like hang out with younger scouts. And um, I, I can see where, where that would come from a little bit. Yes, but but the truth of the matter is that the older scout benefits and grows. And when they when they work with younger scouts, and maybe it's a little bit awkward, that's part that's part of the benefit from the scouting program. They walk away from that experience and they have learned something. We have a new uh, uh, one of our grandsons has his has a his first scoutmaster conference coming up on Monday. He is scared to death. Uh, We've talked to him about what it's going to be, and he's practiced his answers uh, to uh, to a, a, a pretend Cubs, uh, Scoutmaster conference. But when he walks away from that, he will have grown from that experience. He will have had to have met with an adult and answered questions one on one. It's the same in reverse. When the when the older scouts work with the younger scouts, they learn as much as the younger scout. And, the, you know, it's, I think it works well, especially with the Cub Scout age, like the idea of aspirational goals, something to work towards. When you get to a certain age, you get to do different things. And so it's true. Scouts BSA members get to do all kinds of things Cub Scouts just don't get to do. And I think maybe sometimes Scouts BSA members sharing that with Cub Scouts is really helpful to hear like, oh, man. He's 14 and he's getting to do all these high adventures that he can do overnighters. They're going on camp outs. Like, I yep. want to do that. Um, I have just a couple comments to read and then I'm going to, I know we don't have a ton of time, so I'll let it, leave it to you to finish out point four uh, and give us the exciting conclusion to your joke. I know we've all been wondering about that. Andrea says they have a rule that the chief can't have their BSA meeting the same night as their meeting. That makes a lot of sense. If they want to stay you know, involved in the Scouts BSA program, they got to make their meetings. Wendy says her son was a den chief and he found that training class to be so beneficial. He felt more comfortable in the role after the training and the den leader appreciated the help. Rob's got a great idea that troops could host a Pinewood Derby cart building day and yes. area troop does that. And it's a huge hit. I, I always think of that. Um, yeah. And, and Rob also says, reach out to your local troops, let them know you have dens and you could use a den chief. Um, I think a lot of people jump at that, at that, Chance Hannah echoes like they've had a hard time getting a den chief. Hannah, there's a lot of suggestions in the comments that can maybe help identify different den chiefs. Also, get on Be a Scout. If you don't know what troops are around you, you go to beascout.org, put in your zip code, and just take a look. See if there's some troops you didn't know about. Okay. Now, now, now Gina, uh, so I want to summarize quickly what we just covered. One, identify the packs and troops in your area. Get to know them. Develop a relationship. Number two, develop a plan to bring units together. Number three, develop an activity or two, a significant activity that you can participate during the year. And then four, acknowledge the psychological and developmental benefits of having the, the older scouts and the younger scouts interrelate and work together. And now the answer to the joke. How many Cub Scouts does it take to screw in a light bulb? The answer, only one, but it takes a, a fair amount of time because scouts are only good for one good turn a day. One good turn a day. 
That's good. It's terrible. I Teenage think you should terrible. work for Scout Life. I think that you would be a great columnist in our joke <laughs> section. Okay, so to everyone who's watching, pass that joke along to someone during the day, and they will groan as much as you groaned when you heard it for the first time. <laughs> I love that. Yes, if you have a unit meeting tonight, you've got the perfect joke to tell. If you are a Cub Scout leader, who knows a Scouts BSA leader, tag them in this video. And if you are a Scouts BSA leader, who knows a Cub Scout leader, tag them in this video. You guys can make a wonderful symbiotic relationship between your two uh, groups of kids. You can view past episodes of Cub Chat Live at scoutingmagazine.org slash Cub Chat Live. Cub Chat Mike, have we missed anything? No, we haven't, but I was so impressed with all of the comments uh, because it's clear that out there, there are Cub Scout packs and Boy Scout and Scouts BSA units that are doing things together. And I think that is a, that's good for a high five. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Just to leave you with a comment from Rob. He says, reach out to your commissioner if you don't know what troops are nearby. The commissioners have all that info. Okay. Thank you, Cub Chat Mike. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. See you then. Bye, Gina. Bye.